And finally, the space effort itself, while still in its infancy, has already created a great number of new companies and tens of thousands of new jobs. Space and related industries are generating new demand in investment and skilled personnel. And this city and this state and this region will share greatly in this growth. Progress on the high-performance electric drive started off slow, but it began to gain steam when John F. Kennedy announced our desire to put a man on the moon in September of 1962. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. At precisely the same time, $95 million was granted by Congress with passage of the Clean Air Act of 1963. Dr. Becker released the first such known paper of its kind, entitled, Mechanics of Locomotion and Lunar Surface Vehicle Concepts. The reason that this is so important is because the history books have never made the connection between the early high-performance electric drive technology research that was done by General Motors and the Lunar Rover program. What would it be like to be on the moon? a question that has intrigued men since long before the invention of the telescope. To travel across the roughly marked surface of our nearest neighbor in space is an experience that men will soon be having. Probably before this decade is over, the first explorers from Earth will have arrived on the moon. But how will they explore a planet without roads, without atmosphere, with gravity, only one-sixth that of Earth? The research starts in a laboratory. Here, the vacuum conditions found on the moon are studied for the effect they will have on lunar soil. In general, the wheeled vehicle seems a promising solution to the problem of moon travel. With definitive timeline proof, as well as interviews and original documentation, I can say beyond the shadow of a doubt that this division was engaged in lunar rover research as well as electric car research at the same time that this patent was first submitted for approval. Within a timeline of a couple weeks, I can definitively connect the research of the electric drive systems that ended up on the lunar rover program as well as the electric drive systems that ended up in Electrovair 1. These were details that were not shared openly. But Dr. Paul Agarwal was asked by Donald Friedman to begin the initial stages of the Lunar Vehicle Research Program and oversee the research and development of the first fully functioning high-performance electric car program. The money that was granted by Congress for clean air research was used for that purpose, but additionally paid for the research and design of technology that would be utilized in creating lunar vehicle concepts. These vehicles were tested in a soil bin containing soils of a type likely to be encountered on the lunar surface. The Archimedean screw vehicle is designed to operate only where the soil is so soft that it cannot support the weight of a vehicle. Hence, it burrows through the soil. The wheeled vehicle is mechanically the most efficient and reliable of the three designs. While it cannot perform as well as a track on soft ground, its many other advantages make it an attractive solution to the problem of an all-around moon vehicle. In the fall of 1963, Paul Agarwal hired a rising star. Jalal T. Salehi would begin work creating the first fully functioning high-performance electric car prototype. I got transferred from Santa Barbara, I told you we started there, right, mm -hmm. to uh, Defense Research Laboratory a general motor. And where there I was in charge of building, you know, electric cars. It would be achieved on a Chevrolet Corvair chassis and it would enjoy performance characteristics that would make it comparable to its gasoline-powered internal combustion engine counterparts. Jalal would spearhead this program with a young man named George Spix and they would become lifelong friends. 
Paul would oversee this program from a distance as he was fully immersed in creating an electric drive with lunar applications. Electrovera 1 was finished in approximately 20 months and culminated in the summer of 1965. With the exception of battery technology and excessive weight of the necessary components, it was a roaring success. This made the attention of Upper Brass and Thrust Jalal into the spotlight unknowingly. First of all, it was one of the best electric car as far as range, which was limited by the battery. The principle of the first electric car that I built, I was in charge, let me say, in General Motor, was used for lunar vehicle later. Pretty much an overnight success with his first big creation at General Motors, it became aware to the department head, Dr. Paul Agarwal, that Jalal was not a U.S. citizen. This would appear to be an enormous oversight, but Paul had contracted hepatitis during his European travels for the lunar rover research and was understandably distracted when he hired Jalal and put him in charge of design and creation of Electrover 1. So I built, I mean, one of my development was Electrover 1. Uh, the first, you know, practical electric car in the world, you know, uh, that uh, operated from a battery and had a range of 70 miles per hour, you know, which was limited by the battery. Although U.S. citizenship was not perceived to be necessary by Dr. Paul Agarwal for consumer and domestic applications such as automobiles, it was deemed to be necessary by him for top secret military projects such as the Lunar Rover. This is precisely what Dr. Agarwal had been focused on for almost two years. There was a patent pending approval, lunar mobility was progressing rapidly in a laboratory environment, and Jalal could inadvertently derail this progress with his newfound accolades. So within the confines of closed doors, it was decided to build another Electrover without Jalal's involvement this time. It would be virtually identical with one exception. Electrover 2 would have two components that would be combined to perform one function, a modulating inverter. But this car would not have scientific thesis and technical papers distributed throughout the IEEE with Jalal's name written all over them. <laughs> 